What's up, everybody? I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. We got a decent little reaction here. Uh, Larry Elder and Van Lathan should be a interesting conversation because my main issue with Larry, and I used to not like Larry Elder at all, but over the years, as I've grown older, as I've been more honest with myself, there are a lot of points that I cannot deny that Larry makes. Now, the issue that I've had with Larry is that he doesn't really acknowledge racism at all. Now, he doesn't deny it exists. He does admit that it, it, it exists. I mean, Larry's like 70 something years old, so he knows that racism exists. But I guess his position is that it's overblown. Right. So that, that's my issue with Larry on that end. But, for, you know, for the most part, he says a lot of things that I agree with. Now, with Van, Van also says a lot of things I agree with. My issue with Van is he doesn't talk about personal accountability or responsibility at all. I understand it's a little bit easier to talk about racism than it is personal accountability and responsibility. Um, but that's my issue with Van. But anyway, let's go ahead and get to it, man. Now, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you've if you been over here before, you know that there are only two rules. You can say whatever you want. You know what I mean? I love free speech. Talk like you got sense is rule number one. Rule number two is be nice. All praise to the almighty algorithm. Like, share, subscribe. Let's go. I, I want to make sure because I think sometimes... I just, I just yeah, said, I, I, Jim... But no, no, but I, I know love people, but I, like I'm you're a black man. You talk a lot about your father and the experience that your father had um, coming from Athens, Georgia, the things that he did to make it in America and some of the, the obstacles that he overcame. And his story, while an American story, is also a specifically black American story. And so right. I'm just wondering, because I've also heard you say that you don't like being called the black face of white supremacy or what other people have called you. I've heard you say that. So I'm, right now, you do have a special love in your heart, a special cultural connection to black people. Do you or do you not? Well, I am a black person. I was raised in South Central Los Angeles. My father was raised in Jim Crow South. Uh, so obviously there's a special connection, a special experience, a special history. Uh, but in general, I love people. I'm a God-fearing person. Uh, and I want every single person to realize his or her God-given potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Van kind of alluded to this when he was giving your introduction. Why? So I'll just say this in a general sense before we get into it and where you are in, in regards to um, whether or not you're still running for president and, and with the second debate coming up and all of that. Why should people continue to talk to Larry Elder? Seeing where you are right now in the race um, they didn't allow you to come on the first debate stage, and we'll get into that. Why should people continue to talk to Larry Elder? Well, um, I didn't make the first debate stage, in my opinion, Rachel, because I got shafted. Uh, I met all the debate cri criteria. They required me to have 40,000 individual donors. I did. And to submit three polls where I was at 1% or better, and I did. And a few hours... I got to stop this real quick, man, because clearly... The GOP shafted Larry. Of all the things I disagree with Larry on, and there are plenty, I've never seen Larry lose a debate. Ever. Never seen Larry lose a debate. But the two-party system that's the norm in this country is the problem. Uh, any of you with a good memory remember Bernie Sanders? Remember how the Democrats sabotaged Bernie Sanders? Now you have the Republicans not even allowing Larry to run, not even allowing Larry on the debate stage. Because chances are, like, just in my opinion, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that Larry beats everybody on the debate stage with an exception of maybe Vivek, and he probably beats Vivek too. Let's go. After the deadline, I get a phone call from the chairwoman of the GOP, Ronna McDaniel. And she says you're not qualified because one of the polls you submitted uh, is not uh, usable because it's affiliated with Donald Trump. And I said, assuming that's true, why is it my problem? And she said, well, the rules stipulate that any poll affiliated with any candidate cannot be used by any other candidate. And the rules do say that. 
However, Rasmussen then put out a statement and said, we're not affiliated with Donald Trump. So had I picked up the phone before I submitted the poll and called Rasmussen and said, by the way, I want to make sure you're not affiliated with any candidate, they would have said we're not. And so as far as I was concerned, I got shafted. The Rasmussen poll is a respected poll. It's been used by uh, Republicans for a very long time. It was one of the most accurate ones in predicting that Donald Trump was going to win in 2016. And after I found out I couldn't use that poll, I submitted a fourth poll. And the uh, uh, GOP said, you submitted it too late. And it's true, I submitted it after the deadline, but I didn't realize I needed to submit another one, A. And B, they concluded their polling before the deadline. So as far as... You see, the the machine has in mind who they want to run. The machine has the candidates that they want to win, that they want to even be in the running. This is why they don't want Trump in the running. Neither side. Neither side really wants Trump in the run. As far as I'm concerned, there was a sufficient amount of wiggle room that the uh, RNC, uh, the, the GOP, could have put me up there had they wanted to. And not only, Rachel, that was not allowed to the, go to the uh, participate in the debate. I was not allowed to go into the arena. They put a sign at the door and said, don't let Elder or his campaign team come in. So I guess now I'm on the RNC terror watch list. As to whether or not I'm still running, as of this moment I am, the next debate uh, is on Wednesday, and we got to have three polls. We're at three percent or better, and in a few hours, I'll know whether or not I meet that uh, that criteria. Also, I've got to have fifty thousand individual donors as opposed to forty thousand the first time, and I've already exceeded that. So uh, we'll see. I think right now is the coin toss. Why should people still listen to Larry Elder? Real simple. I've got the same, same kind of America First, Make America Great Again agenda that Donald Trump has, but I'm bringing forth some issues that I believe our side does not talk enough about, if at all. Number one, I feel the most important pressing domestic problem in America is the epidemic of fatherlessness. It is particularly acute in the black community, where nearly 70% of black kids now enter the world without a father in the home married to the mother. And And this is why they don't like talking to Larry. For as long as I've known Larry, Larry's been very vocal about fatherlessness in the black community and fathers needing to be in the home. It's one it, it's one of the major components in which direction a child goes is if they have a father in the home. Um, of course, it's not every case. Of course, some dads are shitty. But by and large, if you've got a halfway decent daddy in your life that cares about you, you're probably going to be okay. Everything comes back to fatherlessness. Now, it was just some of the, which is, in my opinion, an obvious go to if you care about black people. Is an obvious go to if you care about your people and your people's legacy is the family structure and children having fathers. Now, for all the people to talk about racism and and discrimination and all these other things and white supremacy, you know what they never talk about? Families. The common narrative has been to dismiss the black family and to dismiss the family in general and to say that you don't really need daddies. Women can do it all on their own. They don't really need a father. And statistics have shown different. You can look around. If women could do it by themselves, then they would. There would be no debate. Let's go. And nobody, not Republicans, not Democrats, talking about this. The other, the other big thing that I uh, am bringing to the table uh, is a need for an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP. Otherwise, government gets bigger and bigger, whether Republicans are in charge or Democrats are in charge, largely because what's driving the budget for the most part are the so-called entitlements programs that even Bill Clinton and Barack Obama referred to as unsustainable. But if you're a politician and you run promising to reform Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid, you will lose election because the other side will accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly. So the only way to make these kinds of reforms and true cuts uh, is with a law that forces the politicians to do it. The other big thing I talk about is the lie that America remains uh, uh, systemically racist. 
It's not only a lie that Democrats push in order to get black people scared so they vote Democrat. It's getting people killed. It's called the Ferguson effect or the George Floyd effect. And that's a phenomenon of cops pulling back in every major city. Uh, and as a result, there are thousands of people who are dead in the last few years who otherwise would not have been killed if the police had been doing their normal proactive policing. And I got to mention here, it is very, very important when you're having these type of discussions to understand that words mean something. If you allege or if you make a claim that the country is systemically racist. Now I get I get when you say that, right? Like we know exactly where we could go when we talk systemic racism. Maybe you would have an argument with the prison system, right? But the prison system also takes advantage of poor white people. Um we obviously would know about systemic racism from the Jim Crow era, mass incarceration and all those things, right? Like there would be no argument with that. But if you're alleging that in 2023 there is systemic racism, then we would have to talk specifically about what you're talking about. What do you mean? That's a different claim than there's somebody who's white that doesn't like me because I'm black. Well, yeah, there's that. I'm sure there's that. I'm sure for sure there's any type of race that don't like you because you're black or you may not like them for whatever they are. But when you allege that something is systemically racist, you got to have evidence in 2023 to make that conversation. You can't bring up Black Wall Street. You can't bring up Jim Crow. We got to talk about right now because terms matter. Let's go. Finally, the issue that I'm bringing forward, I know Republicans support school choice, but I don't think they've made the case of how bad urban American K-12 through education is. For example, one city, Baltimore, there were 13 public high schools in Baltimore, I kid you not, where 0% of the kids can do math at grade level. Another half a let that soak in for a second. Zero percent can do math at grade level. Zero percent. And you know the kids ain't reading at grade level. You can't do math at grade level in high school, not grade level. Now explain to me again why you should be teaching these kids about gender and sexuality and worried about who they want to have sex with when they can't even read or count. What's going on with the public school system? Like, what are y'all doing? Where has this focus went? Why has the focus went to what my kid may want to do sexually from reading and arithmetic? And nowadays in, in, in these inner city schools, the kids can't read or do arithmetic. I mean, it seems like it's a whole bunch of other things that you should teach a kid before you start talking about gender and sex, if you talk about that at all. Let's go. A dozen or only 1% can. That's half of all the public high schools in Baltimore, either 0% or just 1% of the kids can do math at grade level. And guess what? They're all located in the inner city. So these are the kinds of things that Larry Old is bringing to the table. And if I'm not the party nominee, if I can get the nominee to begin talking about these things, I've done my job for my party, and more importantly, I've done my job for my country. That's why I'm doing this. I want to do a quick, really quick follow up. Something that you said about the RNC and them not letting you into, not on the, just the debate stage, but even into the arena. You've also said that you believe that the RNC is rigged and it's unfit to lead the GOP. And you said, and you made another statement about that you make them uncomfortable. So my question is do you think the RNC respects you? Because it sounds like they don't. No, no, I don't think they do. I, I don't think I, I think wow. I give them heart. I think I give them heart run for the reasons I just now mentioned. Right now, for example, we're facing a government shutdown. Well, I, te I tend to disagree with Larry there. I think they do respect him. I think they do respect him. They want to keep him off the debate stage. You don't do that to somebody that you disrespect. You know that he may cause some waves if he gets on that debate stage. So with fear comes respect. I don't like the way they did it, just like I don't like the way they did it with Bernie, but they don't even want to debate Larry. And like I said, out of all the conversations I've seen Larry in, I've never seen him lose a debate. So it was respect, in my opinion, 
the reason they went around and did that snakish reptile shit to keep him out of there was because they knew that he's probably going to be the best debater on the stage. Let's go. Uh, and the GOP is proposing some modest cuts. They want to take a pocket knife to a problem that I believe requires a machete. That's why I and I alone am proposing an amendment uh, to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP. I think that's a, a conversation that makes him feel uncomfortable. I also think it makes him feel uncomfortable about how blunt I am about how the Democrats manipulate black people by playing the race card. For example, recently at Howard University, uh, Joe Biden gave a commencement address and he said the number one threat to the homeland was white supremacy. Are you kidding me? According to the Anti-Defamation League that keeps track of how many people are killed every year by extremists, last year, uh, there were 25 people killed by extremists out of, a, out of over 20,000 homicide victims. Now, you want to play that game. Most uh, most murder is same race murder. Most white people who are murdered are murdered by other whites. Most black people who are murdered are murdered by the blacks. However, every year there are about 750 interracial black white homicides. 500 white people killed by blacks, 250 black people killed by whites, even though. Now, let me let, let, let that sink in for a second. So Joe Biden goes to Howard University and says that white supremacy is like the main thing that, that you know, it, it's on the rise and that's something. Listen, man, white supremacy. Look, they're just talking. They're just talking. This is all they're doing. They're talking shit. They're saying the right things to get you to do the same thing that niggas have been doing since the beginning of time, voting for them and getting nothing for it. If you care about white supremacy, then why would you be giving so many billions of dollars to a white supremacist country? That's what the Ukraine is. OK, anytime you have the Azov regiment, Google that A-Z-O-V regiment. As a part of your military, known white supremacists, a country rife with white supremacists, and you're giving them billions of dollars and all this other shit. Now you want to now you go talk to the darkies and tell them how um, deadly white supremacy is when you're giving all this money to a white supremacist country. Doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't make sense because. It's bullshit. And they're going to keep running that same old bullshit as long as you keep buying it. Let's go. Whites have a much bigger pop percentage of the population. Now, if Donald Trump cited those stats I just now gave you, went to a uh, college, gave a commencement exercise, and said the number one threat to the homeland uh, is black supremacy, you and I would denounce him as a race hustling demagogue and should denounce him as a race hustling de demagogue. But Biden says it, nobody says a word. A few weeks ago, a racist black man, a racist white man murdered three black people in Jacksonville, Florida. And Biden made a statement about it, as you would expect him to do so. However, about two or three months ago, uh, a black man got a gun, went up to a white man he didn't know in Tulsa, Oklahoma, shot him in the back of the head, went to another part of Tulsa, Oklahoma, saw another white guy, pulled out the gun, shot him in the back of the head, killed them both, and admitted he did it because they were white. Biden didn't say one word about that. Even though when he made the comment about Jacksonville, he said silence in the face of that kind of hatred makes you complicit. Well, Biden was silent when the uh, black man executed two uh, white men in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Does, does that make him uh, complicit? I well, in, in all fairness, you know, what I mean, Sleepy Joe, he, he, he doesn't know what's going on from day to day. You know, this man is senile. You know, what I mean, so, I mean, did he not say it because of that or did, did Papa not say it just because he forgot? because he was asleep. Either one is possible. Let's go. I have said that. I tweeted this. To my knowledge, nobody else in the GOP said it or even, or even talked about it. And I'm making very, I think, pointed comments about the way the Democrats play the race card that I think makes the uh, Republican Party feel uncomfortable. So your long question, uh, long answer to your, to your question is, do I feel respected? No, I don't. All right, guys, so this is getting a little bit longer than I thought. I will upload part two a little bit later, probably tomorrow or something like that. But that's going to be it for right now. Uh, remember what I said, man. You can say whatever you want over here. The only two rules are talk like you got some sense and be nice. 
All praise due to the almighty algorithm. Like, share, subscribe.